Red, green and blue channels describe the color and alpha channel the opacity of the pixel. But before we interpret those channels this way, they are just the figures, so we can use them to store other data. Normal pass, for example, shows the angle between the surface and the camera plane, where angles on X, Y, Z axis are stored in RGB channels. Z pass shows the distance between a certain point and the camera plane. Here we have the speed pass, which is available when we activate the vector pass. This described the distance that the certain point traveled in relation to the previous and next frame. Red and green channels show how many pixels on X and Y axis the certain point moved in relation to the previous frame, and blue and alpha channels in relation to the next frame. Those passes properly interpreted and passed through certain nodes can give us interesting effects. Speed pass can be used to create the vector blur that will mimic the motion blur. We can add filter vector blur node, connect the image here, speed pass here, and the z pass here, and that's the result that we get. Number of samples here determines the quality of the blur. Here we can set the blur amount. We can set the minimum and maximum amount of the blur and if we want we can turn the curved checkbox on and we achieve a little bit different result. Normal pass can be used to create the Fresnel effect the way that I showed you when talking about transparency or reflections. We can pass it through the vector normal node and the dot output of it is great to be used for this purpose. But we can also use it to relight our scene. This is how the white material would behave if illuminated by the sun lamp placed on the camera. Sun lamps base only on the angles. So this is exactly what is happening here. We can turn this ball around to change the direction of this fake sun lamp. But when we do so, we may encounter some problem. Like here we have the negative values of the colors. And in most cases it's not what we want, so it would be good to clamp the blacks. Since Blender version 2.64 we have some additional functionality added to certain nodes, like color mix. Here we have the checkbox clamp. If we activate it, the output of this node will be clamped to the values between 0 and 1. The same functionality has been added to converter math node. We could pass this one through this node, and in order not to change the colors, we could add 0 to it. So now when we take a look at the result here, nothing changed. But we can turn this checkbox on and now all of the values are clamped to the values between 0 and 1. As you can see here, we don't have any negative values. But in this case, this is not necessarily what we want. We would rather clamp only the blacks. So let's use good old way of passing this result through the vector map value node where we can activate the use minimum of 0 and this way only the blacks are clamped, but the values above 1 will remain untouched. In some scenarios, we could use this technique to illuminate our scene without using any lamps here. But in most cases, we would rather use this only to add something to the image that is properly illuminated by the normal standard lamps in our 3D world. This technique will not create any shadows, and we have yet another issue. All that is happening here is calculated in relation to the camera plane. So if we wanted to animate our camera, this fake sun lamp would follow the camera. So it would be good to have the access to the normals in relation to the world. Something that I would call global normals. Blender doesn't give us such pass, but later in this video I will show you how to create it. But it's not that easy and I would rather treat this as an exercise than as the technique that can be used in the real-life scenarios. The standard normal pass looks like this, so those are the angles in relation to the camera, and this is how the global normals would look like. So if we pass this through the normal node, we are controlling the angle in relation to the world. So in this case, the angle of this ball that we see here may be misleading, because when we reset this, we see that it's as if the sun is pointed downwards. But even if the camera moves, this fake lamp would stay. So in animations, it would be good to have the access to the global normals. 
In this example, I didn't use any scene lamps, but only the normal pass, and that's what I came up with. The normal pass is passed through the three different settings of normal node. The blacks of all of them are clamped using the map value node where the use minimum checkbox is turned on. And then each of those results are passed through the mix node with a multiply blending mode where I multiply this by some color. And this is as if I have set the color of those fake sun lamps. So here we have such result. This is multiplied by the color, and here are the other two, and the third one. Those can be treated as three different clean diffuse passes, where we have no influence of the material's colors, but only the influence of the fake lamps. As we learned in one of the previous episodes, we can add all of those results together. So here I am adding this to this, and in this note I add the third fake lamp to this one. Now I can multiply this by the color pass. In this case I can use the combined pass for this because I have set all of the materials to be shadeless. So let's now multiply this which is our color pass by this which is our clean diffuse pass and we get this result. And that's how the colored diffuse pass would look like when we placed regular sun lamps in our scene. But the difference between setting everything up in this scene and this technique is that now I can very easily change the color of this lamp, its intensity, the direction, and I can do it very easily with all of those lamps. And I don't have to re-render anything. But here I am using the standard normal pass, which means that I am doing everything in relation to the camera. But if I wanted to use the word coordinates, I would have to use the global normals. Blender is not the best application to create such paths. There is no way to access such data directly, so I began to try to do it some other way. So here is what I did. First, I created the pure white material with an intensity of 1. I will use this one as the material overwrite. Then I created the group of three sun lamps this one is pointing exactly as the x-axis of the world. It's the sun lamp with no shadows, energy of 1 and pure red color. This one points exactly as the y-axis of the world and its color is pure green. And this one is pointing upwards exactly as the z-axis of the world and its color is pure blue. I have grouped those three lamps into the group that I called normals plus. This pure white material that I created is also called Normals Plus. I took advantage of the feature that we have in the materials. We can specify the group of lamps that will illuminate this material. If I specify something here, the lamps that don't belong to this group will not influence this material. I can as well make this group exclusive. This will mean that no matter what are the settings of the lamps that belong to this group, they will only illuminate this material and will not influence the other materials. Here's the result of rendering such setup. If I separate the RGBA channels, the red channel represents the influence of this lamp, green channel this one and the blue channel this one. So this way I have the information about the angles on each axis stored in red, green and blue channels. But there is an issue here. Because when I take a look at the x-axis, I have the information about the angles only in this area that is exposed to the sun. But those areas are completely out of influence of this lamp, so their red channel will stay black. But in order to create the full global normals pass, I need the information about all of the angles, those ones and those ones as well. So I have created the second group of the lamps and I have set their directions exactly opposite to the first group. I called this group of lamps normals minus and I have created another material, almost exact copy of this one, and I called it normals minus and the only difference between the first one and this one is that here I used this second group of lamps. Okay, so I have two materials. Each of them stores half of the information that I need. Now it's time to combine those informations together. I used the third material to this. I called this material normals notes 
and I used the shader nodes to create this material. Here in the node editor we can switch to material nodes and our goal here is to subtract the normals minus from the normals plus material. So here is the material input, let's select the normals plus material, we can duplicate it and here we will use the normal minus and now we can subtract this from this. So I will use the color mix node, subtract blending mode, factor of 1, take the color of the normals plus material and subtract normal minus from it. Now when we connect it to the input of this output node, we should get exactly what we need. So the full information about the angles on each axis stored in each of the three channels. The range of it should be between 1 and minus 1 exactly the same range that is used to store the information about the standard normals. But there is one problem here. When we create the material using the nodes, the negative values won't be passed, they will be clamped to zero. But we need those negative values. So I used a little hack here. If the values that go from this node are in the range between minus one and one, I can add one to each of the channels and I will get the range between zero and two and this range will be correctly passed by this material. Then in compositing I can very easily subtract one from this result and I restore the range that I need, meaning between minus one and one. So I will use another mix node, set this color to pure white, which is one in each of the three channels, factor of one, change the blending mode to add and I'm done. This way I have created the material that stores all of the information that I need in the range between 0 and 2. I can create the render layer that I would call global normals and as the material overwrite I would use this material. The result of rendering such render layer looks like this, but when I subtract 1 from this, meaning the pure white color, I get this result. We have the negative values as we should, like here in the blue channel we have the value of minus 1, and as you can notice this pass looks very similar to the standard normal pass that looks like this, but this one represents the world coordinates. Now when I pass this result through the vector normal I get something like that, but this initial position of this ball here is as if we have placed the sand lamp that is pointed directly downwards. Now we can animate our camera and the direction of our fake lamp will be untouched. So as you can see it requires several steps to create the global normals pass, so as I said I don't think that this technique will be very often used in real productions, but I think that it's a good exercise when we try to create something like this. There are yet some other uses of the global normals pass, but I will come back to them a little bit later in this video. Now let's focus on the Z pass. As I told you before, this pass stores the information about the distance between a certain point and the camera plane. So here, for example, where there is no object, we have some ridiculous values of the red, green and blue channels. But here, for example, I have the distance between a certain point on this blue ring and the camera plane. In this scene, I have separated those objects into different layers and render layers. So this one is placed in scene layer 1 and the render layer that I called 1, this in layer 2 and render layer 2 and this one in layer 3 and render layer 3. I didn't use any mask layers and didn't activate the all Z option here. So that's the result of rendering first render layer, that's the second and that's the third. So as you can see we don't have any information about how this object is covered by other objects in our scene. So now when we want to combine the red ring with the blue ring, and we wanted to use the alpha over node, in this case because I have used the straight alpha mode when rendering, we have to turn this checkbox on, convert pre-multiplied, but anyway this is not the result that we want, because in this area the red ring should cover the blue one. We can switch those inputs here, but we still don't get the result that we want. Alpha channels in this case is not enough to combine such images together correctly. But because we have the Z pass of this image and the Z pass of this image, we can easily calculate which point is closer to the camera, which means that it should be visible and which one is further so it should be covered by the first one. However, we don't have to use any complicated math to do this. We can use the node 
that is called Z combine. So here I can plug the image and it's Z pass. Here I plug the second image and it's Z pass. And that's the result that I get. Both of those images have the alpha channels. So it would be good to use those alpha channels as well. So I can turn this checkbox on, use alpha, and my result looks a little bit better. But as you can see here, or here, something weird is happening. And it's because this node, exactly the same as the alpha over node, assumes that the images that goes here and here have the alpha already pre-multiplied into the red, green and blue channels. In case of the alpha over node, we can very easily convert straight alpha into the pre-multiplied alpha by turning this checkbox on. But here we don't have such option, so we have to convert the alpha mode before the image goes into this node. But as we learned before, it's not that difficult. We can simply use the converter alpha convert, use the key to pre-multiplied option here, and simply plug it here, duplicate it and plug it here, and we get much nicer result. This is how the result would look like when we don't convert the alpha mode here and don't use the alpha. This is when we use the alpha, and here's the result when we convert the alpha mode before the images goes into the Z-Combine node. And that's exactly what we want. Now our situation is a little bit different when we want to mix in the third ring. Let's duplicate one of the input render layers node, change the render layer to 3, which looks like this, and try to combine this with this one. So I will use another instance of Z-Combine node. Let's connect those ones. And as the second input, I will use the output of this result. Let's take a look at the result now. Here, on those edges, everything looks fine. But here, something weird is happening. It is so because this input has already the alpha pre-multiplied into the RGB channels. And it's because we have used those nodes here. So this input has the proper alpha, but this one doesn't. So we as well have to convert the alpha mode of this input. And that's the result that we get right now. All of the edges here behave properly, but now we have to keep in mind that this final image has the alpha already pre-multiplied. So depending on what we want to do with this later on, we can leave it as is, or if we want to, we can convert this alpha mode back to straight alpha by using another instance of alpha convert node and use the pre-multiplied to key option here. So we have the jagged edges, but we don't have to worry about it. And I explained it all in the episode about the alpha. Okay, there is yet another pass that may be very useful in some compositing situations, but is not available by default in Blender. It's called the point pass or position pass. Something that would store the information about the position of a certain point in a 3D space. We have the RGB channels and XYZ position. So it shouldn't be a problem to store the information about the X position in the red channel, Y position in the green channel and Z position in the blue channel. I will also use the notes material for this purpose, but creating this pass will be a little bit easier than creating the global normals. Because in the material notes, we have the direct access to the input geometry. And when we take the global output of it, those are exactly the data that we need. But we are facing the same issue that we had with the global normals, that the negative values will be clamped to zero. So I will use a very similar hack, but in this case adding one will definitely be not enough. So I will use some ridiculous value, let's say 1000. I simply assume that no object in my scene is placed further than minus 1000 on any axis. We have to choose this number depending on the scene. So let's use the color mix node, take the global and plug it here. And here we have to set the values to 1000 on each channels. And this can be connected to the output. When we use the material nodes, we have to keep in mind that we always have to change the factor to one. In compositing nodes, the mix nodes factor is by default set to 1, and here in material nodes, it's not. Of course, we have to change the blending mode to add. I have set the render layer that I called position, and as the material override, I used the material that I just created. 
I called it PPAS. So here, input render layer, let's use this render layer position. And if we want to get the real positions values, we have to subtract 1000 that we added in the material nodes. So let's add the mix node, subtract blending mode, and let's subtract 1000. And that's the result that we get. Red channel shows the position on the x-axis, green on the y-axis, and blue on the z-axis. Many compositing packages make great use of such paths, so we can export this to this other application, or try to do something with it here in Blender. I will, of course, focus on the latter. But first, let's try to take care about the obvious issues that we have here because of anti-aliasing. In case of such passes, anti-aliasing is our enemy. We have huge differences between the values here, where we have minus 1000, and here, where the values are rather low. Anti-aliasing in such cases causes huge problems, like in this area. We could render this pass without anti-aliasing, or try to limit the differences that we have here. I told you that we should add and subtract 1000, because this is the safe value. But we should keep this value as low as possible. And in case of this simple scene, the value of 4 would be enough. So in material nodes, let's change the added value from 1000 to 4. And here in compositing, let's subtract 4. Let's re-render. And as you can see, anti-aliasing shouldn't cause us that huge problems. Okay, so what can we do with such paths? I will show you just one simple example, and I hope that you will find some more exciting uses for this. We can, for example, create a kind of 3D mask. The mask that will base on the position on the x-axis. I have rotated the camera a little bit, and just in compositing, just basing on the position pass, I will reveal those objects as if I scanned this. I have the node set up here that I will explain in just a moment, and I have animated just one value. And this is what is happening when I move the slider here in the timeline. And that's the rendered result of it. Okay, so we have the position pass. Red channel stores the information about the position of each point on the x-axis. So let's separate RGBA and take a look at the red channel. Here we have some negative values because those points x position is minus something. Now I have created the group of nodes that I called from to feather. Maybe not very sexy name, but here's what it does. Let's connect the red channel here to the value input. Take a look at the result here. At the beginning, let's set the feather value to zero and change those values from two. This specifies the range. So let's set this one to minus one, for example. So this means that everything that's located above minus one on the X axis will be white. So this gives us all of the points that are located between minus one and 0 0.5 on the X axis. Let's increase this value to 1.5, for example. And as you can see, more points are visible. Here we have the feather amount. Let's set it to something like 0.2. And as you can see, the edges here are feathered, 0.4. So we are gradually going from this value to this value. And this is not just a simple blur, but this is the actual 3D feather. So having such group of nodes, you probably already know how I animated this scanning effect that I showed you. I separated the RGB channels of the position pass, connected the red channel, meaning the X position to the value here in this group of nodes, and then I have connected some inputs to the remaining channels of this group. This is just an input value node, and that's the one that is animated, and I have connected this to the from input of this group. Then I have specified the distance that I'm interested in, and I have set it to 1.4. When I add those values together, I can connect the sum of it to the two input of this group. So if this value is equal zero, the two value will be equal 1.4. If this is equal one, this value will be equal 2.4. And then, Simply to have all of the inputs grouped together, I have added another input value node to specify the feather amount. Then I have animated this value from minus four, which gives me such result, to this value on the last frame of the animation. And in between those keyframes, I have 
such results. This group of nodes is included in the source files, so I will not explain how it works in details. If you want to, you can analyze this. I needed to subtract one value from the other value, then divide something by something and so on, and this gives me exactly the result that I want. I have used the global normals pass to illuminate this scene using the normal nodes where the blacks are clamped, they are multiplied by some colors and then all of those ones are added together and multiplied by the color pass. The only thing I had to do was to set the alpha of this and I used the product of the original alpha. This is just a math node. Here goes the original alpha and here to the second input I have connected this one and that's the product of the two. So the final result looks like this. Here I have composited all over the pure black color. All of the setups that I told you about are included into the source file. So here we have illuminating the scene using the standard normals. Here is combining separate elements where we have this combined with the second one and then the third one. And here we have this animation that I showed you. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to show you in this episode is the group of nodes that I created that allows us to rotate the coordinates that are used to create the position pass or the normals pass, no matter if they are the standard normals or global normals. The group looks like this, so if this is our position pass, I can connect it to this group. When I take a look at it, nothing changes, but here I have the values rotation X, rotation Y and rotation Z. I can rotate the coordinates on each of the axes. Let's rotate this 50 degrees on the Z axis. This background may be a little bit distracting, so let's set the alpha of this image. I will use the original alpha and now I can rotate the coordinates 100 degrees, for example. I can use this to rotate the position pass or the normals pass. So here in this setup, in this scanning scene, I can instead of using the original position pass, I can use the rotated position pass and that's the result that I get. I can easily animate those values, X, Y and Z axis. So maybe let's take a look here. This is the scene illuminated by the standard normal pass. Let's plug this group of nodes here and this allows me to animate the angles of all of the fake sun lamps. This group of nodes is rather complicated. I had to use a lot of trigonometry, so I will not even try to explain how it works. In fact, I have created this a long time ago, and to be honest, I don't even remember all of those connections. It doesn't work very smoothly. It would be better just to have such node instead of having to create such group of nodes. But since we don't have it, I decided to play a little bit and create something like this myself. So please try to analyze those setups, play with it a little bit, and maybe you will come up with some interesting results.